you want to be like everybody else, that's your choice. But that only is a short lift. To be a legend and be longevity is to always constantly be doing new and improving stuff. And always finding a new way to be ahead. You are now listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. The show is designed to help you grow your mobile app audience and get advice from experts in your industry. Now, here's your host, Sean Garvey. Hey, what's going on, family? It's the architect himself, Sean Garvey, the host of BV Mobile Apps Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you want to learn more information about BV Mobile Apps or if you are in the market of getting your app customized, what are you waiting for? Go to their website right now, bvmobileapps.com. That's bvmobileapps with an S at the end, dot com. Get your app customized today, bvmobileapps.com. We're going to talk to professional experts in the industry on how to grow your business and become successful at what you do. And I want you all to stick around. Towards the end of the program, we're going to give you information on how you can get your app customized and learn more information about BV Mobile Apps. On the telephone line right here on the BV Mobile Apps podcast, we have a DJ all the way from Canada. He's been rocking behind the turntables for over 32 years, and he has over 30 years of experience as a DJ. He is a member of the Nerve DJs, and he's going to give you some great information on how to be a successful DJ. We have DJ Despair on the telephone lines. Good day, DJ Despair. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for taking the time and opportunity to come on the BB Mobile Apps podcast and talk to our listeners. And I'm so happy to have you on the program today. We have so many aspiring DJs listening to us. And uh, before we go any further, I want to get a little bit of backstory behind your DJ career. I do understand that you had the opportunity uh, throughout your DJ profession to uh, be on the stage and work with so many celebrities, so many talented artists in the industry. Go ahead and break that down to us. Uh, Talk to us first on how your DJ career began. Well, I started at uh, the age of 10, but I grew up with DJs. My father and my uncles and them were all DJs. So everyone did either radio or played sounds. So I just basically grew into it. And then I started DJing for rap groups, throwing little house parties. And we used to break dance too, so we used to make our own music and our own stuff to break. So it was like, it was basically, I was just born into it. So a lot of my family is actors, singers, and all different types. So it just became natural. So, like, and then the DJ part of it, because I just love controlling music. So, it's mm-hmm. like, I love drawing and I like painting a picture. So, painting a picture with music was basically the same thing as being an artist. Absolutely. And some people can understand that. And I mentioned just a few moments ago, you worked with some heavy hitters in the music industry. Uh, go ahead and tell the listeners some of the artists that you had the pleasure of opening the set for. I've played with people like Red Alert, to Jazzy Jeff, to Pete Rock, to Stag Selector. Mm. Uh, like, and it's been a pleasure. Like, I've played with a lot of DJs, uh, DJ Clips, like DT, DJ X, Power, mm. like a lot of guys that I grew up in the industry mm. watching as a kid. Okay. And becoming an actual superior with them in the game later on is. There's guys like Mastermind, all these guys that mixtapes out here that people don't even know about. Like my boy DT, uh, DTS is one of the, the legends I've had actually running one of the longest radio stations out here in mm-hmm. Toronto called Mastermind Radio. So he's been in that for over 30 years. Wow, that's incredible. So like, there's a lot of legendary stuff that I've got a chance to be around, especially DJ K Cut from Main Source. And they've all inspired me to become better than because out in Canada, it's hard to even blow up as a DJ. Like you have those who battle DJs who've made certain levels for themselves, but to be like a network DJ, you don't get that many. And I like breaking records. I like breaking new records. I like to be the first. Outside of DJs, the number of DJs that you named, you work with some incredible people from 
uh, one of my favorite groups, one of my favorite groups in hip hop, Slum Village, Mob Deep, um, Cardinal Fish, uh, so many. Electro, yeah. So I was like, um, I got into the promotion side of it too. So I would bring down my favorite acts. So for people to see them, it's there. If, you know, if the price is there, the time is right. And then I had the privilege of bringing Mob Deep down here just before Prodigy passed. So it was one of the, like, it was my, like, dream show to ever put on. Plus play at and, like, you know, pr- perform. But I basically barely even got a chance to really enjoy it because I was behind the scenes. Like, you mm-hmm. know, like, the promotion side of it at running. So it was like, I got a chance to sit down and talk to Prodigy and blaze a joint with them. And that was one of, like, the best times because we actually talked about life. Yeah. And what he was going through and what needs to change in the industry and what his vision was. And I wish I had it on video, but it was like one of those personal one on ones that you never get to do when you're like with uh with an artist when you're just going to shows or just playing at them. Like when you're bringing them down and you get to sit down and talk to guys like Twista, Louis Rankin, R. I. P. Master Ace, E M C crew, I've had them like I brought them down and had them at my house. Like, the privilege to be around these guys outside of the industry and they're real wholesome people is mm-hmm. amazing. Like Smith and Wesson, and them, I've gotten to meet a lot of people, even to like King Just and to a lot of people in this industry that I never thought I'd ever talk to. Being friends with Rampage from Flip Mode. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like King Assassin, DJ Cat X. These guys like have DJ for like Tupac and like Master P. You know, it's like <laughs> It's a it's a different high and a different feeling. Like when you get to know the like know them actually personally, than to just being you know a fan. Talk about some amazing accolades and incredible artists and talent you have worked with over the years. Uh, I mean that's incredible. Uh, we we could spend the next two hours or an hour talking about more artists that you performed with, but that's for a whole nother show. <laughs> But I want to I want to take it to Canada for a moment. I mentioned to our listeners that you are from Canada and I want to be a little bit more specific. You from Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Canada. I understand that the music industry and the experience for DJs are completely different in Winnipeg. How so? How how is the music industry and the DJ experience different in Winnipeg compared to all the other places? inside Canada and outside of Canada? Well, if you break it down the west to the east side of Canada, the west side is more backpack rap, more, um, like you got guys like Mercury, Mad Child, Snack the Ripper, Crawl the West, you, like, and then you got my boy Pimpton, who is like the diversity, because you got more Caucasian artists than black artists in the west. So coming out of Wednesday too, you got more indigenous, and then the hip hop scene is, is very cultured because mm. you got a minority of everything. Like it's just a jam packed mixture of everything. So you have like half black, half black, white, and like everything is just a mix. But everybody's doing backpack there. Everybody's their self. So you'll have some West Coast rappers, some self rappers, and everything because everybody out here listens to everything. We don't just listen to one brand of music like in the States and stuff. You'll have this side listen to the South, this one listens to the West Coast, this is the East. We're very diverse to everything, so we're like consuming it all at once. Mm-hmm. So you got UK field, you got everything coming out of here. So, like, there's, um, like, right now I'm working with this crazy Latino artist, Litos, and he is going back and forth between his culture and the English side. And then you got East Coast, Toronto, and all that. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's so many like trap rappers and their own style of slang and talk. Winnipeg doesn't really have that kind of thing. It's just mm-hmm. like uh, it's, it's just like a, a town in between everything. So right. Uh, so you got to go in and out through here to get to either east or west. So you got a mixture of everything. It kind of puts me in the nostalgia state of mind of the '90s. Of when that era when you had such a wide range of hip hop artists, like you mentioned, you had your backpack rappers, and well, then you have conscious artists and you have backpack artists. There's like a whole different aspect of every 
everyone. Yeah. But you see, the conscious artists, rappers now are totally different because you have now a lot of different races and realities now than how it was before. Before you had uh, poor righteous teachers and everybody coming at you. Now you have Islam and, and Chinese and the Japanese, like every race has got music now coming out here. Going into the business, I know you had to create and develop a business plan. Um, going into the business, is that correct? That I started when I was 16. <laughs> so, somebody told me that I could do self employment as a DJ while I was also cooking and stuff on the side. So I could actually make money off the stuff plus get money back mm. for the stuff that I bought. So back. When I was buying records, it was in the 90s. So, and in terms of stuff, so you, you could imagine how expensive that was, especially with record pools and all the stuff, being a kid buying records. And then later on, I completely turned it into a full business, registered everything with names and all that myself, and turned it into an actual full company. So now I don't just DJ, marketing, promotions, everything all at once. Mm-hmm. So I just spent my time learning. I'm a producer, engineer, everything in one. So it's like all the years of growing up with people, mm-hmm. I became a lab rat. So I just learned everything. So I really didn't want, I was always searching for a new team or if somebody leaves. I didn't want to have to be left out to try to figure out how to replace that spot. So I just learned everything on my own. So for any DJ that's listening to us right now on the BB Mobiles podcast and, and hearing this part of the show right now that don't know how to put together a business plan, like what is your advice to the aspiring DJ listening how to put together a business plan? We hear you. We, he, we heard your method of madness. But how can one start off with putting one together? For one, just come up with a plan, a 10-year plan. Because... Not everybody wants to DJ for the, as long as we, most of us have. Because if it doesn't get liquidated to a certain point, you need something else to fall back on. And if you are going to take it seriously, you know, of the original. Come up with your own game plan, your own stuff. I don't play or sound like anybody else because I refuse to. I don't listen to other people's music or stuff because uh, other, unless it's an artist, I don't really listen to other DJs unless I'm working with them. Because you just want to keep focus on your stuff. You don't want to derail yourself from you. If you want to be like everybody else, that's your choice. But that only is a short lift. To be a legend and be longevity is to always constantly be doing new and improving stuff. And always finding a new way to be ahead. That's why having an app for the past, since 2012-13, and now everybody is looking at the fact that having an app now in 2019 kept us ahead of the game. And I'm so glad you brought that up. Of course, this is the BB Mobile Apps Podcast. And for those who are just tuning in, I'm Sean Garvey, having the great opportunity of talking to DJ Despair out of Winnipeg, Canada, giving us some great information for uh, DJs listening to us that want to be a successful DJ. Um, The app, of course, is available. And I want you all to stick around because we're going to give you information on how you can download DJ Despair app to your mobile device. We got all that and more coming up a little bit later on in the podcast. Uh, We're going to stick around on the topic of uh, aspiring DJs um, that are trying to get out there into the industry, trying to get out there in the business. One of the issues that I see is a recurring issue, DJ Despair, is when DJs, actually there's two issues. One is when DJs agree to perform at an event. It could be like at a concert event, wedding event, or something that's family-oriented, and there's no agreement on the table. There's no contracts on the table. That's one. And then the second thing, and I know you hear this a lot of times, DJ Despair, DJs get shortchanged. (laughs) <laughs> they would sign up to uh, perform at a event and they don't get paid well. Um, it, it could be like maybe 50 bucks for a DJ to come out and perform for three hours. <laughs> uh, I, I know you heard those stories before. So um, talk to our listeners. My first question to you, 
is the uh, contract side of things. As far as uh, being a DJ and having your own business, how important it is? How how important is it to um, have a contract or some type of written agreement for that client when that DJ is? Yeah. If you're doing like big, like if you're doing events now, contracts has got to be on the table all the time. Mm-hmm. Even the half the deposit up front, and then the rest when you get there. Because now people are making excuses, and a lot of people think like if their show's flop, you're they're making you reliable and say it's your fault, you know. And it's it's not the DJ's fault. Like if you're paying the DJ to be a promoter, to be a part of all this stuff. I can understand that, but if you're just paying us just to come in and set up our time in the door of that, you need that that stable contract stating this is how much I'm getting paid because that friends and favor stuff that I will we'll discuss when you get here or we'll work something else after never works out the way you think it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it'll turn out really good. Sometimes it'll turn out really because you drove like how many miles to go to this place or flew. And then next thing you know, your hotel's not there. This is not there. That's not... Like, everything you have to have on an itinerary right away. Mm -hmm. Like, I've even gone on the manager's side of it and rolled with my artists and that. And, you know, that's a big thing with time. You know, because you never know. And make sure you have a writer and your set time for what's going on. To, like, what time you got to be there, what kind of sound check, what kind of equipment they're going to have. Because most of the times, these people don't have the equipment you need. Mm. You know, it's it's a rough part being a DJ most of the times walking into a room. Yeah, and I suggest if you're touring, make sure you have your own stuff with you just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't ever be too safe, right? So, to the second part of the question, what should a DJ do when he or she is in a situation where they are being shortchanged? Well, that's their choice if they want to do it or not. Okay. You know, I wouldn't take. Because I like I would literally walk out to the point where they would have to pay what I want. You see, that's where you got to play your balls in the game with that. Because in this game, the promoter is making way more money than you actually think. Especially between Canada and U.S., it's a total different ball game. Mm-hmm. Out here, the promoter's not really like they're making more off you if they charge you two to three hundred bucks to DJ for the night, and then they bring in about a thousand people, five to a thousand people. They've made their money. You got 300 bucks for that night. So you know what I'm saying? It's like, you got to look for your worth. What is the aspect of the game? What is yeah. the building like? How many people are going to be there? Mm-hmm. It's a whole different game now. Like, you can't just say, okay, yeah, 500 bucks. And then next thing you know, 10,000 people show up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where you lose it. Just know your worth. <laughs> and things because a cheap DJ is always, always a good DJ. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Despair on the telephone lines right here on the BB Mobile Apps podcast. Uh, not only that DJ Despair, not only that you are a DJ and you have your own business and you are uh, doing your thing out there working with so many great talent, but you are also a member of the Nerve DJs. And shout outs to the members out there um, from Nerve DJs. You are doing your thing. How did you become a member of the Nerve DJs? I did. First, I was circulating mixtapes online, and I had a um, partner of mine, uh, mine, Truesdale, started circulating my mixtapes out in Georgia and, and Cleveland and all that, and then I ended up doing a mixtape with a member of the Nerve DJs. And next thing you know, Johnny and I were talking, because we were both talking about, because uh, we had another member of Pat that had us part of on the grind DJs, then it just turned into a circle, and then it became their DJs, and then started to be the branch of Canada, and been with them for a strong period of time, and it's been amazing. John Yo and Big Half have been big brothers to me. They have coming out. They have come out here too to see what it's like. We're going to be doing something bigger with bringing the conferences out here because that's never been seen in Canada. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's the it's been amazing, like, just from all the artists that we've had a chance to break to all the, the artists that are celebrities now, just to watching them grow from Cardi B to Young M.A. to Davies to everything. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, what? to be part of a family like that is, is, uh, is 
is not something that I've expected, being a Canadian DJ. Because <laughs> it opened up so many doors to so many different things. Because I also mm. work with, like, you know, like, there's also members who are part of other things. And then I got to work with, get to work with Woo DJs, like, you know, and then Mix Mafia, and then everything to the branches off each other. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, it's just a circle of people worth networking, and that's what I love about it. It's almost like a family, basically. It's a family branch of other families. If somebody wants to be a part of the Nerve DJ organization, uh, what does it take to be a member of the Nerve DJs? Just register. Just go online and register at NerveDJs.com. Awesome. It's not hard. It's just that if you're going to be part of it, just have that hard work and dedication to keep yourself relevant and keep it going. Now, let's take a moment and talk about another organization that you are a part of, uh, Wu Worldwide DJ Coalition. That's a very good look for you. Uh, I know it's different from Nerve DJs, but also talk about how did you become a part of that coalition? That happened, I've been like back and forth, like working with members of the team. And then one day... Uh, um, Jimmy Willman came to uh, Jimmy, you know, came to uh, Toronto for a show. Saw me playing and everything, and then made it official. And from then on, I've been part of the family, and then working with Slate Stone and Cadex, and now meeting the rest of the crew, like Agile and everybody. It's been different because that's another family within itself too. And um, the members are also part of Mix Mafia, so it's like breaking records from like even being part of breaking records from Wu and all stuff that was like a childhood dream mm-hmm. like, you know like, growing up with them listening to them it was like it was that's hip hop right and then being around that atmosphere especially being part of their DJs and all stuff Johnny and all these guys and like even the Wu Capos Cadex and them they're legends I looked up to that I didn't even know who they were but I knew who they were from what they've done but to get to know them as an individual, to running coalitions and to being a part of those families is just amazing because mm-hmm. like, we message each other weekly, daily. Like, we keep intact. Like, everyone wants to see the next person rise. Mm-hmm. There's no hate going on around here. Like, that's what I love about this. Like, and especially being a Canadian DJ, that's a, that's a lot of love. You can get respect from those people you can be a part of that. Was there ever a point in time where you felt like this could be somewhat of a conflict of interest, being a part of Nerve DJs and being a part of the Wu Worldwide Coalition organization. Was there ever a conflict of interest at one point? Nope. Because I work with everybody equally. There's um, nothing that basically everyone who's a member of Wu also is a member of Nerve DJs. (laughs) <laughs> so it's like mm-hmm. there's a lot of us who are connected no matter what and everyone else is part of different coalitions so it's just like a, another family hub so there's no there's no conflict of interest with in what I'm doing just because I'm not overpowering stuff where I'm being um, like a label or any of that stuff it's just these are families that I choose to be a part of because they actually make sense to me and they actually help with what I'm doing and I actually help them so it's just a family aspect because I have my own company Street Killers and that's basically my hub out here in Canada so I basically run everything as a, as an individual underneath my company so these are things I represent instead of you know like I'm just this you know what I'm like saying like most of these rappers these days Rock, Rock Nation is only Def Jam <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, right that, that's, you know what I mean like everything is just a work game now it's like we're working is there any uh advice for someone to be a part of Wu worldwide dj coalition and can one still be a part of the coalition if anybody wants to be a part of any of the coalitions hit us up and we'll accept you as long as you have that strive and you know like you believe in breaking records in the music Mm-hmm. It's not just to be a name and anything to be attached with. I take these two companies to heart, and they actually do what I like. You, they do what they say. So mm-hmm. it's like breaking records is the thing. Yeah. The one thing I love about Nerd DJs 
is that when you're on when you're on the conference calls and you're on the stuff, you know, they'll there's the truth, and then there's people who like you know they, they like your music. Like if they don't like it, some people don't say stuff. Some people will say things. It's just a game. When I listen to a woo, like the woo DJ conferences and all the other stuff, like Mix Mafia and all that, if they don't like it, they tell you straight up it sucks. Because <laughs> it's like a bully DJ aspect. Mm-hmm. Like you have you you have a make it or break it on this side. Like and then you have like we're pushing you in the industry. Like you know these guys are on here for a reason. Right. These kids are just like, hey, what do you think about my track? Uh, and like, you know, it's like, like, honest, it's like right now, the game has got to be honest. Like, you can't be just telling everybody their track hot. Right. You know, it's like, and that's one thing I like about these guys because there's no, there's no garbage. Like, if the if the track, some people may like it, some may people are not. Everybody does not play the same type of music. But also with the Woody, there's more of a boom bap head, more bars head, more more grimier like you're it, that's what I love about that aspect because it's, you're you're looking at the street aspect of hip hop mm, that's a good point the boom bap style to everything all balled into one it's like people would like to listen to more of like this could boom like your body and put you into like you know in different <laughs> different types of trunks and all these things on tracks and then you have the next track where it's just like a pop in a club I'm having fun I'm doing the party like they, everything has got its own place and there's always a different DJ crew to put those in that place. Mm-hmm. So that's what I love about this, because not everybody's going to play the same type of music. You have to have a diversity. Right. Once again, big shouts to Nerve DJs and also big shouts to the Woo Worldwide DJ Coalition. You pretty much broke it down, the amazing benefits of being a part of both organizations. Um, but again, tell them how... <laughs> One DJ can be a part of either Nerve DJs or the Wu Worldwide DJ Coalition. Just go online or go on Instagram, hit up Wu Worldwide DJ Coalition, and go on Instagram, hit up Nerve DJs, or hit up DJ Johnny L. So go to the site, and you can register directly for Nerve DJs. DJ Despair, we only have a few minutes left here on the BB Mobile Apps podcast, and I want to reiterate to our listeners that the goal of this podcast is to turn aspiring DJs into successful DJs, especially in the new world of technology where a lot of DJs are going outside of the vinyls and the turntables, but they're doing a lot of innovative things um and now you have so many djs getting into radio and podcasts um you have a show called street killers radio how long has that been going on how long (laughs) um i've been running it for about 10 years now but for a minute on nerve djs but I was on another podcast before that. And then um, since I've been with Nerve DJs, I've had consistently running for about, say, seven years now. Okay. Seven or eight years now. So it's been, so it's been, it's been great. Like, it's been amazing. It's been, like, I I get to break artists that I mess with, so it's fun. <laughs> I'm always up. I'm always ahead of the game. I'm always playing exclusives. So I love my shows. I've been on other radio stations. I'm also on Woo Radio and uh, Mix Mafia too. But um, Nerd DJs has been the longest running one. Street Killers Radio. It just consists of just music. Uh, what else can people? Is it just music, or is there other things to the entree? that people can expect from Street Killers Radio? I'm like, I'm a bars and beats guy, so it's like, if the beats are hard and the bars are hard, like, I'll mix both. Plus, I'm like, my shows are a mixture of everything, so you'll have UK, Canadian, everything all in one. So I'll just give you a world mix of everything in one. So it's like, um, because I have a lot of artists out here that um, are unheard of, like from uh, Gondotti, Patchy, Roni, Pimpton, like they they're quiet. <laughs> and then they're they're like they're loud but they're quiet. Mm-hmm. And then I get a chance to put these guys on my mixes and put them out there 
United States for people to hear them. So it just ups the scale of the artists that I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. So and then you got my like my underground artist too, which is like Jay Wise and um, Carl Brown, and, like DTS, and like all these different guys that are pushing and on the boom bap side, they don't get to break out of here. Because all you get is like a simple radio stations out here that play within the perimeter of Canada. And not a lot of people are making it onto satellite radio or any of that. Mm. So it's like being an outlet like that to even push Canadian artists for you guys to hear them at the same time as a new artist in the States is breaking. It's amazing for them. What is your advice to the DJs that also want to get into radio people think that radio is easy but at times it's not what it appears to be what is your advice to those djs what is, um if you want to get on radio sign up for nerd djs <laughs> <Sign up> for <laughs> big radio. like sign up to like get a part of the coalition be a part of something because you get opportunities out of it i've been with nerd djs and then I've had my radio show mixed in songs for a while, so I haven't had any stress or complaints. Like, as long as I'm consistent, I stay. Cause, like, I stay on. That's mm-hmm. all it is. And I'm so glad you said that, staying consistent. I think, to me, it being consistent is the most important part of having longevity in the industry. It's easy to stick to something that you know and then fall back from it for whatever reason and then come back to it years and years and years later and it's just not the same um but well, being, consistent. being a dj nobody gets it that you have a power to keep an artist consistent like i have like this new artist empowered that we're about to break and then all i kept doing is playing his tracks he's about to drop his first official video now and people are already waiting for him like it's you have that power as a DJ to do whatever you want. <laughs> it is like, and if people like it, they don't. If people do like it, you're going to get that crowd that actually pays you to go do that. Like, I don't just play for hill crowds. I do weed events, too, and weed festivals. And I smoke with the crowd. Like, that's a whole nother world in itself. Like, and they love the music. So it's, because Canada's legalized now, so... There's more mm. outlets for that now. Mm. All right, I didn't know that. That is some great information right there. <laughs> now you just now you got more DJs ready to sign up for Nerve DJs and the Woo, the Woo Worldwide DJ Coalition. Like this is fun, and I like the part that you said a few moments ago about being interactive with your audience, uh, having to go out there and engaging with the audience. How important is that for a DJ? You know, it's funny, me and my artists just talk about this morning. <laughs> it's like, uh, right now, for you to be relevant all the time is basically the new in. Like, just doing random mixes, making sure that you have mixtapes out. Like, just as much as the artist is pumping out an album, you should be pumping out a mixtape. I was doing that for a while. I was like, I'm going to get back into it because I took a hiatus because of health issues and certain things that I was dealing with in business. But I really got into the business aspect where I said, I'll cut back on doing mixtapes and my shows for a bit to go learn. And now I know how to properly market myself, what to actually put out, how to place myself in, because you can't really do too much with, um, with commercial artists on Instagram and all these things because you get booted off mm. for just promoting that. So now if you really want to be the game, go after independent. That's the biggest game that's going to be ever thing because before they even buzz, you're already going crazy. Like, And they appreciate it. I get messages every day every time I'm promoting an independent artist that I'm the first one to ever do a video drop. Mm. The first one to do this or play with it. Because like they need, they want love too, but everybody's always going out for the big, big money. Right. They want to be playing the big celebrity mix tapes. And you, you can only do that for so long. Because playing commercial music is only going to get the people going, like, okay, this is what you can play at the club. But then you're not really doing anything. You're just really, um, how can I say it, taking a brand and rebranding it. Like, mm. just, like you know, that's you're not taking a brand and making it known. Mm-hmm. You're just recycling it. And everybody is a recycler. Like, every DJ turns around and copies, he's playing the same music. 
you're going to hire the same DJ to play the same music all in the same club? If all three of them play the same music? Um, so just one or two more questions. Um, BV Mobile Apps Podcast, Sean Garvey on the telephone lines with DJ Despair. The website is uh, DJ Despair. That's djdespair.com. And you got a bunch of stuff on the website, including services uh, in which people can go online and check out your services, even purchase your services. That's djdespair.com. Um, what else can they get by going to the website, djdespair.com? There's going to be updates on everything I'm doing, podcasts coming soon, um, more videos, more interaction, because that's the game now. So we're going to be doing more live, we're going to be doing more things. So we're going to be taking it up a notch. So it's, um, there's never going to be a dull moment on anything that I'm doing. The different kind of services that you provide, uh, do you provide just anything, whether it's concert, weddings, or are there certain limitations? It's everything from mixtapes to events to marketing. Um, we have it all. Like, I can put you in, we can put you in the place. Especially with getting marketing through their DJs and all the different DJ outlets. Having, being part of a lot of the DJ crews that are part of and outlets, gives a one-stop shop for a lot of people to go through instead of having to, like, go to everything individually. So that's one thing that I offered that is really good with World Field, these guys, because everything's open, so it's, it's not hard to... Instead of you going directly and trying to find your way through, we could help you get there fast. Mm -hmm. So I left my outlets open so you could see what I'm doing and what you could actually get involved with and anything that you need, we could put you in the place to get to it. Also, the app. You cannot forget the app. Um, along with the website, you have an app. Um, talk to our listening audience about the DJ Despair app that you have available. Oh, I love that app. Everything is on there. You can find me on anything. <laughs> 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 On the website, the Instagram, you name it. It's all on the app. It's all on the app. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, so, DJ Despair, man, how can people get in contact with you? How can people follow you on social media? Um, everything is DJ Despair. DJ, D-I-S-S-P-A-R-E. That's it. Like, I am everywhere as that. The one and only. Uh, and Je we're going to bring back Fun facts uh, is a segment, it's part of the uh, segment that we do to help the audience and listeners learn more about you, some fun facts about you. Of course, you from Winnipeg, based in Winnipeg, and uh, it's the coldest, from my understanding, it's the coldest part of Canada than anywhere else. You all have the coldest winter weather of any major Canadian city. Uh, between here, like, yeah, uh, we pretty much are. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to wear five, six, seven jackets every day? No. No, 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 no. It's not that bad. Like, it's bad, but it's not, like, that bad. Like, what, what people would think, like, I really can't even explain it because I've lived here my whole life, so it's like, mm -hmm. I'm, the cold is, uh, it's a different cold. It's like, it's a wet cold and a dry cold. Winnipeg is a very cold place, but it also can be a very hot in spot in Canada too. Mm, okay, that's so that's it's kind of got its medium, like it will it's it's got a back and forth. DJ Despair, we really appreciate you for hanging out with us and the listeners uh, to talk about how to be a successful DJ. All all you really need, of course, are the essentials. You need to be um, practicing on your craft, learn from great DJs like DJ Despair. And also, uh, one of the key things to have as a DJ is a website, business cards, uh, social media. You got to have all three social media, or if not three, more than three. Um, and uh, be consistent. Be consistent as a DJ. Uh, any last and merchandise. And merchandises. Absolutely. Any, any last words, any final remarks before we let you go? going to do this, put your heart into it, because a lot of people put their heart into music to have you blessed with it to play it. So that's what this is about. Like, keep 
keeping the music running, keeping the vibe, because music never dies. And that's for all the aspiring up and coming DJs listening to this very important podcast. Myself, your truly Sean Garvey and DJ Despair. Make sure you check them out on all your social media at DJ Despair, Instagram and on Twitter. And the website, once again, is DJ dot com. So if you have any questions or if you want to learn more about DJ Dis- DJ Despair and you want to uh, look into his services, make sure you go to the website DJ Despair dot com and to spell it out to you, that's DJ D I S S P A R E dot com. Simple as that. We really appreciate your time, DJ Despair, and uh, much success to your future endeavors. And keep on giving people great music, man. Giving them great hip hop, great music from all across the globe. Thank you. Don't forget to tune in next week on Wednesday to Drink Killers Radio and their DJ at 12. A. That's 12 a.m. And uh, for more information about Street Killers Radio, they can go to, of course, djdespair.com. Or you can also listen to it on the app. On the app. Most importantly, don't forget, get that app, DJ Despair app, available on all app marketplaces and everywhere. Go ahead and download it right now. DJ Despair, thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, this has been my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. And make sure you go to the website, bvmobileapps.com to check out all of our previous and latest podcasts. You can also learn more information about how you can customize your own app today. That's bvmobileapps.com. And make sure you follow me on all social media at Sean Garvey on Facebook and at Sean Garvey ATL on Twitter, Instagram. It's a new year. It's a new day. I'm starting it over. Starting the day. Thank you for listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean, Sean Garvey. Garvey. For more information about BV Mobile Apps, visit is the, the website. website bvmobileapps.com Don't forget to follow BV Mobile Apps on social media at BV Mobile Apps. Tune in again next time on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast.